On this week's Dig Deeper, I'm going to talk about how to create an oak forest from acorns. I'm standing in a part of the farm right now that I created back in 2007 from an area that was just open grass. There was uh, 20 some acres on the farm that year that were useless acres and I wanted to convert them in, into either habitat or food. The soil here was not good enough uh, to plant this. There was no way that I was going to be able to create any kind of income for the farm or any kind of deer food back in here because the soils aren't good enough. So it's a perfect candidate for uh, just enhancing the habitat. I don't want any useless acres, and these were some useless acres. So the solution that I took was to spray this area off with uh, glyphosate, kill everything that was here. I came in and disked it, created the perfect seed bed just like you would if you were going to plant corn or you know some kind of a row crop on your farm. Took the acorns that I, that I, that I purchased, spread them out, uh, four to five bushels per acre on the acorns, and then uh, disked it again to bury the acorns one to two inches, three inches at the most, uh, deep into the ground. And just let nature run its course after that. Uh, the next spring I did spray uh, a herbicide called Oust XP on this same ground, and that was enough to kill out all the competition, give those little seedlings one year without competition to get established. Well, white oak acorns, white oaks in general, are fall germinators. So if you've got good you know white oak acorns that have already started to put a little bit of their of their main root out or they've you know they've, they've just started to get going which is typically what you're going to find i mean if you're pulling it, white oak acorns unless you get them right after they hit the ground you're going to get ones that have already started to put that little tap root out uh, but anyway if you put those into dry ground and you don't get any rain for a good period of time they're going to die uh, those white oaks are, are not going to make a tree whereas red oaks on the other hand are spring germinators so you can collect the red oak acorns in the fall, plant them in the fall, and they'll sit there through the whole winter. And then in the spring, when the conditions are perfect with a lot of moisture, uh, then they will germinate and grow. So you're gonna get typically a lot easier regeneration with the red oak family than you are with the white oak because of the, the different time of the year when they germinate. So the, that's one factor. The other one is this, the quality of the seed itself. And you wanna make sure that when these acorns are collected, especially the white oaks, that they go into cold storage right away and that you take them right from cold storage into the ground. And there's a lot of information available about this online. You're going to want to do searches under direct seeding or direct nut seeding. Um, and you can also get a lot of information from your local forester. Take advantage of either the state district foresters or even private consulting foresters. Um, make sure that you collect the acorns in the area roughly where you're going to plant. You know, don't buy acorns from um, Michigan if you're going to plant in South Carolina. Uh, that's not going to work. You want to get them within, I think they say a 90 mile radius is a, is a pretty good rule of thumb of where you're going to plant. Uh, get those seeds in the ground as quickly as you take them out of cold storage. Those are the keys. But uh, again, there's nothing magical to this. Uh, you have to get good quality seeds, you got to create a good quality seed bed, and then you got to get the right conditions, you know, with moisture that fall to really uh, turn this whole project into a forest. Next, I wanna walk you through this area that I planted. And like I said, this was uh, 2007 when I established this one. And you'll see trees here that are all the way from knee high to 15 feet high that all came from that one seeding back in 2007. The biggest difference, and I'm gonna look at one, uh, let's see if I can find one here. Well, here's a, here's a white oak right here. This tree was planted at the same time as some of these other trees around me that are 15 feet high. The reason this one's not 15 feet high is because the deer have, have kept nipping the top off. So it'll, it might grow a foot uh, every summer and then the deer eat that down in the fall and then it tries to go again and just never gets ahead of them. 
and then there's the odd one here and there like there's one right here right next to it here's another white oak that's what is that eight eight and a half feet high just a couple of years ago this must have gotten enough momentum enough you know height to get away from the deer uh, there's one right behind us here so here's one that is just now you can see popped tall enough that the deer can't continue to eat it down this is one of the reasons that I like this direct seeding versus planting it in the rows because I can flood this whole area with so many little trees that some of them are going to get past the, the deer. You know, if you plant with a row planter and you put in, say, 300 trees in this area, um, the deer are going to keep 300 of them, you know, nipped off. But I might have 1,500 or more trees right here in the same size area. They're not all going to make maturity, uh, but you can see that enough of them now have gotten past the deer that I've got you know, something to work with. But if you look in here, you can see it's super thick. I mean, I could never have planted it this thick if I would have used a, a tractor and a you know, bare rootstock row planter. It's just a, a more natural way to, to put oak trees on the terrain than to use the, the equipment. I planted white oak and red oak on my property as part of this reforestation program. I did put a little bit of walnut in here too. Um, my primary focus is the wildlife. So obviously I'm creating habitat, places for the deer to bed as these trees are smaller. But as they start to grow, they're gonna produce acorns that the deer will feed on. And ultimately they're gonna uh, create timber value for the property. So doing something like this, taking those useless acres and converting them into something that's useful, not only does it create long-term value, but it should also create short-term value for your property too, because the next person that comes along sees something that's a little bit more fine-tuned. Not quite as much work to do. It's a painting that's almost completed rather than just a blank canvas.